Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about our, our beautiful partner, the moon. We're going to be discussing uh, the new hypothesis about its composition and the chance for this beautiful object to actually have quite a lot of water on the inside. In other words, is moon actually kind of wet? Welcome to What The Math. So what you're observing right now is basically just a bunch of asteroids colliding with the moon and they're creating this very very beautiful spectacle of explosions and also the moon that actually now has quite a lot of water on the inside. You can go in here and um, you can go into the materials here and see that, uh, oh, okay, no, never mind, the water just evaporated. There was a lot of water, it's all now gone because the moon got too hot. Now, what I wanted to talk about, though, is the new hypothesis that kind of speculates that there might actually be a lot of water inside the moon. And it's based on the fact that we now, or as of now, believe that if you actually go to the um, planet Earth and you go a little bit underneath the surface of the planet Earth, you'll actually discover an entirely new layer of rock that's essentially made up of water. Uh, in, in other words, it's a rock that is uh, filled with hydroxyls, and this is a topic um, I am going to discuss in a little bit more detail uh, in, in the next video. But what you need to know is that underneath the surface of Earth, there is actually just as much water as there is on the surface. In other words, this right here is actually not a correct representation of how much water there is in, um, on our planet Earth. There is a lot more uh, inside right around here. And as, as a matter of fact, it's even more than there is on the surface. Now, there are several implications um, from all of this. One is that we need to take a look at um, one of the more prevalent origins of the creation of the moon first and realize that first, just like I mentioned in one of the previous videos, moon back in the days looked very different. It looked actually very similar to Earth in a sense. It had a bit of an atmosphere, it had some liquid water on it, and it was also very volcanically active. On the other hand, Moon is almost practically Id identical in composition to the planet Earth, which implies that even though the surface looks so different, the insides do not. In other words, there is a big chance that Moon actually has the same layer of water on the inside. Now first, let's actually take a look at the simulation from this new study uh, by Miki Nakajima and Dave Stevenson of the Carnegie Institute for Science. Uh, this is part of the uh, California Institute of Technology. And here you can kind of see um, a really cool animation that they created where you see the uh, so-called Theia hypothesis where the early Earth receives a collision from a relatively large object that then creates um, the Earth and the Moon. Now, this is the most prevalent theory for the creation of the moon right now. This is how we think our moon was formed. And the idea here is that the moon and the Earth were basically created from the same stuff. Now, just to kind of simulate this in the Universe Sandbox, what I can do is we can place um, a random rocky planet that's maybe a little bit less massive than the planet Earth right here. And then we can launch another planet that's about three to four times the mass of Mars at um, this object. And I guess let's just observe what happens when these two objects collide. So we're going to unpause the game. And basically uh, what we should observe is that they both will more or less kind of evaporate, mostly because of the power of the collision. And th from this evaporated material, we'll have, um, well, hopefully several objects. We'll see if there's gonna be more than one. But there's also a chance that maybe it's just going to be one large massive Earth. So this evaporated material will eventually start orbiting around Earth and the dust that it creates will eventually settle and form Earth and its companion, the Moon. But because all of this is made up of the same material, its composition is more or less the same as are the proportions of various stuff that's present inside these objects. Like, for example, here we have something that's similar to the moon forming. And so inside of it, if we actually look at the um, actual materials, we'll most likely see the same stuff, more or less. Slightly different, but not by much. In other words, um, if we were to actually 
go back to the Earth Moon simulation, this should suggest that underneath the surface layer, the moon should be relatively similar to Earth. All right, so let's uh, maybe go to the moon for a second and look at its mass and try to um, extrapolate or basically try to predict how much water could it potentially have under underneath the surface. Well, we think that Earth underneath the surface has about 1.5% or maybe even 2% by mass. In other words, it's a pretty big number. Um, for the moon, this would be approximately this much. So this right here uh, is the bowl of water that might be present inside the moon. And it's actually, at least it appears to be quite a lot of water. Mathematically, this seems to be correct. This is approximately 1.5% um, of mass of the moon. And so in essence, this is actually a huge amount. Now, what does this mean for us as human beings and obviously for our um, our future exploration of the moon? Well, this implies that we could potentially not just harvest all of this water and create a colony that's self-sufficient using the uh, underground water um, underneath the lunar surface. But this also implies that let's actually do it this way. Let's add the water to the moon right now we'll make it to about 1% maybe 2% um, and give the moon slightly better conditions at preserving the heat as well so that it can potentially um, have an actual liquid water here. And so maybe just maybe this will be actually enough. It, it is uh, warming up right now. But basically what this implies is that there might be a way for us to one day even terraform the moon. Okay, it might be a little bit far-fetched, but uh, you could potentially somehow bring this water to the surface and maybe even turn it into something a little bit more liquid looking. Let's see if we can try it here. Is it going to work? No, it's, it's still not enough. Uh, I may have to actually decrease the albedo quite dramatically for it to work. And is this going to work? Oh, look at that. I think this may actually have done it. We might have. Yeah, there we go. Liquid moon. Look at that. So this might have been the face of the moon a long time ago, clearly not anymore, but this is essentially how much water there would be if you were to bring it up to the surface. Now, obviously the problem is that that water is probably hundreds of kilometers underneath the surface, so bringing it to the surface would be pretty difficult. And the other thing about the moon is that because it's so small mass-wise, it's not going to be able to hold on to this water or the atmosphere very easily. Um, unlike Earth. Earth has no problem, it's a lot more massive. Moon is only 1 80th of the mass of Earth, so it's going to be more difficult for it to maintain this liquid water on the surface. But it doesn't change the fact that the water is there, and we can definitely use it for the future colonies and maybe even create underground colonies on the Moon that will then be able to use all of this water to essentially help us create some sort of an underground society with water just flowing everywhere because as long as you warm it up and as long as there's pressure it's going to be liquid water anyway so that's all we discovered um, in the recent study about the moon we now think that there's probably quite a lot of water inside and we think that we just need to find a way to extract it other than that that's all i wanted to talk about in this video thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys tomorrow hopefully you enjoyed this video and will subscribe if you still haven't space out and as always bye bye